murderers. They were murderers. There was a consciousness that something was in the air. We were isolated from the rest of the country. December 16, 1929. As the sun rose through the dust, 6,000 of us marched into battle. This was no war zone. These were no trenches. This was peacetime Australia. Welcome to our hell. The battle for Rothbury became one of the darkest hours in Australia's industrial history. When 10,000 coal miners, refusing savage wage cuts, were illegally locked out of their mines by the owners, no Premier, no Prime Minister, no Royal Commission had the guts to set it right. For 15 long months, our families went without. Our community was starved and our government was ducking for cover. After fighting in the bloody trenches of World War I for our country, we came home to a country prepared to kill us in our own backyard. We just wanted to get in there and talk with the scabs. Those little mongrels brought in from Sydney to work the mines for handshakes. While we lost our homes, they lost their souls. You man, stop there! Tell our that this is private property! Coming through, you're not going to stop us. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. Stop! So we charged the gate. We got through the gate, all right, but uh, we were bashed back. Cops looked as frightened as we did. You could see it in their eyes. No one knew what was going on. Then we piled in through the train tracks. Well, that's the worst place we could have gone in because you had to go between these lanes of coal wagons. The lanes between were plugged up with crowds of miners. And the foot police were at the end. They had to concentrate a target all right. Grown men cried. This couldn't happen. Diggers, fighting diggers. Over the screams, the stench, the, the fear. The guns came out. The cops had started firing. This policeman fired. He could have hit me, but he hit Bob. And when I said what happened, he had, his hat was off and the blood streaming down his face. And he said, fill up again, you bastard, have another go. The, the, jumping over us to try and get away from the... try and get away from the bullets. There was lots of things happened when we first went in that, uh, that we had to get out or get shot, one of the two. And I was one unlucky one that got shot. So they were firing at our backs and we were in retreat, which we, we thought was cowardly. Cowardly, 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 cowardly. I still remember the smell of dust, blood and vomit. We dragged out whoever we could. Poor Norman Brown, he copped it all right. Poor bastard was shot and killed. Killed for having a voice. Killed for protecting his family. Killed for the price of coal. 6,000 men, women and children surrounded his grave. I've never seen anything like it. Australia had never seen anything like it. Oh, we left in uh, oh, left two or three trains. Went there that day. Yeah, so it was... Everyone is with the biggest fear he'd ever see. Yes. The coppers never left town. The miners remained locked out. And while the big end of town debated how to sweep this one under the carpet, the Unlawful Assemblies Act brought the Basher gangs down. And we called them the Woolloomooloo Wreckers. The Unlawful Assemblies Act dictated if more than two people were congregated in a public place, they were in breach of the law. Now, immediately after Rothbury, there were police wagons within sight of each other, 24 hours a day. And if three are in the street, 
taught me the cricket or the weather, they get off and bash you into the ground. Oh, well, they, they, they were murderers. They were murderers. Yes, and there were plenty of them. Monday, June 2nd, 1930. The lockout finally ended and the mines reopened after 15 long and painful months. The most powerful influence that stays in my mind is on the day they return to work, after all those months. And they're in the train, going to them. They've got their crib boxes and their boots and their hats. And nobody's talking. Nobody's saying anything. They're sat there in silence. Nobody knows what they're thinking. It's not the silence of defeat. It is absolutely not the silence of defeat. It is the silence of reflection, and it's the silence of saying, we'll live to fight another day. <laughs> 